Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 8, Episode 13. Listen, can I give a PSA? Yes. Everybody who was once a review channel that did Love and Marriage Huntsville, come back. <laughs> Too many of y'all dropped off. Mm -hmm. Right? I feel lonely. Yeah. Blair feels lonely. Come back. I like watching all the reviews. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie. Not all of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, come back. Because the more I look around, I'm be like, oh, a lot of people just dropping off. Like, like, like they're not doing it no more. I don't want to be the only ones. Mm -hmm. I believe in this crew. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't know the plot anymore. We just riding. But we just riding. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You ready to walk us through this ride? Let's go. Let's go. So Mel is having a property preservation class. Yep. She has in the field training. So she has some of her students with her mm -hmm. to go around looking at this house. Um, she also shows uh, the class on Zoom for other students who are not there. Okay. Well, Mel ends up calling Sunny. Um, because Sunny does renovations and she knows that they're talking about moving to Huntsville. Mm -hmm. So Mel is hoping that Sunny isn't trying to be petty with his move to Huntsville. She asked if Sunny is going to come to Kimmy's event and she will not be attending. Okay. Okay. Fair. That's fair. Actually, I found that very interesting that she didn't come knowing that she don't really have a problem with Kimmy and vice versa. But, yeah. but still, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So we go to Chris and Nell's house. Mm -hmm. He is trying to get some of his agents to buy a suite um, on like a baseball field. Mm -hmm. uh, but they end up talking about how the session went with Dr. Francis and how they're both kind of feeling about it after the fact. Nell doesn't exactly know what the therapy did for her. Mm -hmm. um, she wants to know why is it about her and not about the kids and the issue as far as them not being able to take care of their own business. Yeah. So Chris says that Dr. Francis was trying to find out the foundation of the issue. And, you know, um, Nell says that she understands that they call you because you listen. She goes from zero to 100. Mm -hmm. But it's hard when she's the giver, never receiving, even though she doesn't mind being the giver. Mm. She just would prefer them to stop asking so she can recoup some things that she's given. Okay. <laughs> but she says she can listen and take the advice. Mm -hmm. And Chris tells her that sometimes or we'll, we'll need to change some of our ways so that way the kids can change as well. Listen here. Nell, I don't know if you know this, but you are their mother. Mm -hmm. so how they are who they are is because of you mm. you get what i'm saying like i don't know if you've been doing something um as a pattern and you've been cultivating this behavior in them mm -hmm. that they come and you give and you give and you give and you give and now you mad that when they come to you they come to you like this right like you're you are complicit in this so 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 one person you don't want to be is someone who lacks accountability just take it on the chin and change mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying change everybody change mm -hmm. it, it's not it's not the time to point the fingers what did you think about this scene um i was glad that they talked about it yeah. kind of had like a um a meeting after the fact so right. they can really see what they got out of it what are they actually going to work on like for real not mm -hmm. just what was done or said in you know in the session yeah. and you know it, it did seem like Nell was still a little bit hesitant as far as like wanting to make any changes mm -hmm. because she feels like she already knows the issue but like Chris said like in order for us to see a difference in them we need to be the ones to make the change first yeah. and I think that that's something that she probably understands but I just think that Nell gets frustrated mm -hmm. I think she gets irritated and annoyed and she doesn't feel like having patience I understand. <laughs> so let's keep going so we go to Kimmy and Maurice. Mm -hmm. They invited everyone except for Martel to this tasting event. So they're, they're like, you thought that was uh, intentional? Yeah. Me too. Mm -hmm. um, so they're having it in this building. And, and well, no. So they own a building and they are having a tasting by one of the chefs who's interested in becoming a tenant in one of their buildings that they purchased. Okay. So Mel arrives first and asks if she can make an announcement, which is going to be a good surprise mm -hmm. when everyone arrives and Kimmy gives her the okay. So Marceau is asking Tisha, um, not Marceau, Maurice is asking Tisha if there's going to be a truce today. Mm. And we see flashbacks of Tisha popping off at the last event. Listen, Tisha, <laughs> Tisha, you was a little lifted. Okay. And Tisha talking about if we got issues, we could just, you know, you know, get them off of our chest and all that and all that type of stuff and she's like and we'll just move on from it and i'm just like tisha what do you have on your chest today like exactly <laughs> like it's, it's it's crazy but let's keep going uh, mel ends up asking why black was closed and tisha asked was it the students or the melameters that came down trying to look for us mm. and mel was like it was my students but it doesn't matter why is black closed 
Mm. <laughs> so Marcel explains that it's been down for about a week due mm-hmm. to the city um, and something about the furniture and not paying taxes on the furniture. ML in the confessional says that she's never had any business issues like this with any of her businesses. Mm-hmm. So she feels like when it comes to Marcel, like things get a little bit weird, a little bit funny once he gets to explaining stuff. Hey, listen here. Let me just nip this in the bud right now because I already made a PSA announcement. Um, that I want everybody who dropped this show to come back and do this show. But I need the cast to collaborate with me. And and I need y'all to stop talking at each other subliminally in these confessionals. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, like, like hey, 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 guys, can we make a good show? <laughs> like, like, because like, in order for y'all to have, in order for us to have a good review, y'all got to be a good show. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So this whole a uh, passive aggressive like hey i had a class and i had a, a bunch of students and i told them y'all could go have a good time at black and things like that like it's close mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying i'm like okay you know what i mean and then and then you have you know tisha go be teaching like you know because we black you know it's always something and then you know she always have the things that you know business with marceau you know it can, it's just, it's a little sketchy i i never came across this and th- that could be true mm-hmm. but at the end of the day because you know how you know the, the rumors and the tabloids are basically saying about marceau business practices mm-hmm. but the whole point about it is <sighs> Do y'all like each other mm-hmm. <laughs> as a cast? Mm-hmm. Because that's all I keep hearing is subliminal, subliminal, subliminals. Yeah. What did you think about the scene? If you have any thoughts at all, um, I don't know. I think my only thought is I understand that Mel wasn't around during the scene that yeah. Keisha and Marceau were having. You know, the issue of basically black being shut down. Mm-hmm. But I feel like a lot of the um, conversations are repetitive. Yeah. To me as a viewer, I'm like, I already know why the business was shut down. Oh, yeah. But now we got to explain it to Mel. And to me, I'm just like, y'all ain't got nothing else to talk about. Uh-huh. Um, so right. so that's just kind of how it felt to me. I understand she wasn't there. And maybe for the plot, they need to continue to mush. I don't know. I, I'm not a producer. I don't know why they have to repeat things mm-hmm. that we already know the answer to as the viewer. Yeah. It, it doesn't make for interesting television. To and, me. And, 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 so. and, and just so you just so I can knock the nail on the head a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. We was here for the first half of the season. Y'all wasn't. Right. It was us and Stormy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was us, Stormy, and like that new girl y'all try to put on us that we don't understand and don't believe anything she say. Mm-hmm. Okay? So we've been here. We heard this before. So Mel, Marceau, Kimmy, Maurice, just because y'all don't know the story, we ain't trying to rehash it like Blair said. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So everyone arrives. Yeah. Now asks if anyone has heard from Destiny. And Trish says that she trains her. And Kimmy mm-hmm. was just like, well, she didn't confirm or deny that she would be coming or not coming to yep. the event. So now asks, you know, what Destiny has been saying or thinks about the Sunny situation. Mm-hmm. And Trish says that she has a few choice words for some people. And teacher was like, uh, is Kimmy included? I'm like, what is why going what on are here? we getting started on already, Tisha? <laughs> Mm. and Tisha was pretty much saying well because she didn't come to the event does she have an issue with Kimmy because of that Mm. Um, so basically nobody answers Tisha Okay. Um, Kimmy explains that her situation with Sunny is that Sunny was supportive during production when she was dealing with her cancer diagnosis. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's why she has like a sensitivity to Sunny and, you know, didn't mind like spending time with her. Okay. So um, Kimmy says that there are two. T- well, Nell first says, well, it's not like she was coming for Maurice, though. So it's mm. like easy for you to say when she wasn't trying to come for your man. That's fair. So Kimmy tells them that there are two sides to every story. Um, her point uh, in finishing things is is basically like, what's his name? Um, Moses should have ended things more directly and clearly with destiny. Yeah. And she thinks that um, Moses is more culpable in the situation um, versus Sonny. Okay. However, Stormy thinks Sunny and Moses are both culpable. Okay. Chris says that Sunny was doing her job, and sometimes people get it mixed up as far as, like, friendly being a friend. And Tisha was like, no, they've hung out, and Nell agrees that they have hung out in their own free spare time as friends would do. Okay. And Kimmy just kind of chalks it up to the fact that everyone is having their own different perspectives, and that's what makes the situation a little bit more murky. Well, Nell says that Destiny took it hard when she spoke to her at the gala that Stormy had. Mm -hmm. And someone asked Nell, like, did the stories match? And Nell was like, not between Stormy, not between Sunny and Destiny, but Sunny and Moses have literally sounds like they rehearsed their story. Listen, they went on the podcast and do it. They do it on the show. They make sure that they got their lives together. Mm -hmm. And Tisha doesn't know why Sunny acts like she's mad at Destiny when she's the one who stole Destiny's man. Mm. (laughs) 
Well, Chris sold a house to them, so they are serious about moving to Huntsville. Oh, so he actually sold it or, or, or like he had plans to sell it? He said he sold it. Oh, okay, nice. And Mel, she was actually irritated by the conversation. She didn't like the fact that they were talking about Sonny and Moses' situation and even necessarily Destiny's situation, but more so on the side of Sonny and Moses because they're not here to defend themselves. So Mel decides to change the conversation to how did the modeling and stuff go at the gala? And, and, and this is what Blair Point is saying. Like, we're rehashing... This is not an episode. This is a this is a, a review. Exactly of, of what of, of has last happened. season, <laughs> and, and we're like, hey, Carlos, whoever's in charge, you should just put us right in St. Thomas. Exactly, right? <laughs> like, like, mm-hmm. like, you get what I'm saying? Like, just, just everybody just show up and we on the beach. I don't care how we get there. We don't care about the packaging. We don't care about the uh, uh, surprise with the bottles and things of that nature. We know the story. We are literally one of the few channels that review the show. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, so I think there is a lot of old information with old perspective just coming from people who've been gone for the first half of the season coming in and basically like well i don't like how y'all talking about sonny and moses well okay well that's just how it is Mm -hmm. i don't know why mel is using this situation to be basically a defender of this Mm -hmm. especially since she is a um a victim in her situation in her marriage and Mm -hmm. things like that i understand and i said it before y'all could go back and look at the first half of the season that I did not really respect um, um, Destiny's point of view when it came to you took my man Moses, not my husband, not my fiance, but my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hey, hey uh, uh, Destiny, you're divorced. Like, right. like you've been married. You got a kid and things of that nature. This little relationship is not that important that this should be your story. But when you can't talk about nothing because you got a gag order, then it's like, then, you, you, got. then you have to talk about this mm-hmm. story. So, yeah, I understand. So everybody's saying, you know, the gala went well, the modeling went well. Yeah. And Kimmy said something along the lines of like, oh, you had your husband up there doing that or whatever like that. And they make it clear that, oh, Ken is not the husband. Yeah. Um, he says that marriage is the goal, but they just have some um, loose ends to tie up. It's not loose ends. She's still married. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, y'all make it more sketchy than what it is. They really do. I'm like, just say she's still married to the guy. People will understand that. Like, mm-hmm. like Maurice was married at one point. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? They accuse you of Kimmy of basically coming in the middle of his marriage. Mm-hmm. So guess what? Just say, Ken, hey, we're still married. They will understand. They're you get still what I'm married. saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So Marceau says They're still married, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So Marceau says that Marquez came to black. Yeah. And he told him that he owed Ken a thank you. However, it's fair that Marquez feels a way because mm-hmm. you came into the situation while they were married. There was some type of pre-relationship. Okay. And Ken explains that it was never a relationship. Okay. Well, Marcel was like, well, there was some conversation going on um, to where you came in to where the conversation needed to stop. Mm-hmm. So clearly something was happening that wasn't all the way copacetic. Come on. So... Then they start trying to ask for the timeline. Yeah. So Tish and Marquez were separated five years ago, which was 2019 is what they say. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and then they said that they have been together for two years. It kind of took a little bit of additional questions to get that answer because you're like, been together that we seen each other or been mm. together that we ain't seen each other. Come on now. <laughs> and then Marcel asked, what year like what year have, what, did yeah. y'all start talking mm-hmm. whatever and that was around 2015 2016 mm. but the first time he saw her in the gym he ran away which was around 2019 to 2021 so that's and i'm the, like that's a whole three-year gap so <laughs> so so there was a pre-relationship or or at least a a uh y'all was talking dms or, or doing whatever before y'all saw each other okay and mel tells them like look some people can't understand that you can have a conversation with the opposite sex and mm-hmm. it not being anything some people can't do it themselves so that's why they can't imagine that is possible stop right there mel right message wrong messenger because <laughs> i'm like mel you're a victim of basically martel line and you saying this is somebody who is nobody Mm-hmm. Who end up being baby mama. Right. You get what I'm saying? So I, I find it I find it very interesting in this way. I don't even think Mel believed what she said, but it's like as long as it's against them, mm-hmm. I'm gonna be on the opposite side of my castmates. Yeah. And cause I'm like, for someone who is a victim of of having a a a, a of someone cheating on them in the marriage to the point where he has a whole baby, I 
think Mel would be the one to be the first one to be like, mm, that's that's a little sketchy. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, or that could be seen as crossing the line exactly. or whatever the case may be. But she's not being totally cut and dry in the situation. Mm-hmm. And and like you said, I mean, they didn't have her back in her situation no, they when did it not. was a cut and dry situation. Mm-hmm. And so she's not going to sit up here and allow them to nitpick other people no. or trying to find the issues in other people's situations mm-hmm. when she was like, Clearly, the dude was doing me dirty, but y'all didn't do any of this to him. Mm-hmm. So I'm like you said, I'm not going to be on your side. I'm not going to be part of the investigation. Crew. Exactly. So and and just to give a little a peek behind the curtain, just to break the fourth wall a little bit. Uh, I think her name is T- uh, uh, Tisha. Is her name Tisha? The new girl. Trish. Trisha. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was, in my opinion, not being completely honest in that Carlos interview okay. with, with Heavenly. And uh, Ken was better. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? And Marcus, oh my goodness, one of the worst interviews I've ever seen. Oh, it was terrible. When it comes to a guy that played, let's just be clear. <laughs> let's just be clear. And I'm like, just talk. I'm in my grandmama house. Uh-huh. Okay? And, and, and heavily, she gonna pray for you. Okay? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get her to call and pray for you. So it's like, I don't know where he found these people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and But it just seemed like, all these people need to go through a Sonny and Moses course yeah. of getting their story together because all of it, the more I hear one person, the more I feel like we get further and further and further away from the truth. Mm-hmm. Well, Marceau, um, I mean, he's not buying it. No. Tisha uh, tells us, the audience, that maybe Martel wasn't lying about Mel having conversations while they were married. Like I said, they doing all this passive aggressiveness inside the confessionals. It's wild. And why is Tisha still throwing shade at Mel about her marriage when Martel had a whole baby on her? Like, it's the, it's the weirdest thing. I don't know if it's jealousy or, like, what it is. But I'm just like, where is why does Tisha have this venom towards Mel in this way? And I, I get know. it. They've had their situations back and forth, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. But the way that they operate, you would think that they're past it. But at the same time, Tisha just be going at people randomly as well. Yeah. So I, I, I can't try to figure it yeah, out. Yeah, don't, don't try it. <laughs> so Mel tells everyone her surprise mm-hmm. that she is inviting all of the ladies to a trip. They are all going to go to St. Thomas. Mm-hmm. Tisha asks if she can bring a plus one. Mel says that she's bringing some of her single friends and Mel says she doesn't mind. Now, this is very different. This lets you know, like this show is really off the rails. Usually this is a cast trip. Mm-hmm. This is a, the 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 equivalent of a cast trip, but Mel really can't stand to be around these people to the point where she basically was like, "Can I bring my friends?" Mm-hmm. I don't think I ever seen that happen on all the seasons of Love and Marriage that I watch. To the point where she's like, "I'm gonna bring my friends too, but I'm gonna bring y'all too." And I'm like, and and I'm just like, "Wow, we are really here to this point to where we kind of lost the plot." And I even would say to the point of this being love and marriage, um, the show is centered around couples, marriage relationships. Mm. So I would have liked to see a couple's trip. And Mel came across that she was dating. Yeah. Why don't she want to bring her dude to the show? And don't get me wrong. I totally understand why she wouldn't want to. Of course not. Why bring him on the platform, make the block hot, whatever the situation may mm-hmm. be. But if we're doing this show, we are not a housewives of Alabama. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is love and marriage Huntsville. And Come I want to see the dynamics of the couples and how everyone is getting along as far as their friendships it does and their relationships. Off. It does give off housewives. So I'm just like, yep. you're like you said, you're like, you're shifting what the whole purpose of the show is. And I can understand because Mel is divorced, but that's not kind of what we come here to see. Yeah. To be honest. So I might even go so far and say, if you're not married, you can't be on the show. Mm. I'm, wi- I'm willing to go that far mm-hmm. with, with the show, but let's, but let's keep going. Well, Tisha, Destiny and Kimmy are having lunch together. Okay. Destiny didn't come because she had a date. Kimmy was like, you couldn't move the date. But Destiny was like, no, she didn't really want to do that. Okay, <laughs> and that's and that's what I'm saying. Like, this is why this 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 what got you fired last time, Destiny. Being tight lip and being like being eva- and being evasive. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like it, being elusive and 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 just thinking you were running back and missing tackles and stuff like that. Like I had a date. You miss work. <laughs> that's all I hear. Is that like, oh, how come you didn't come out? Mm-hmm. 
I had a date. Okay, so okay, we gonna see how many dates you have next season when you're not on here. When when Sunny and Moses not your story anymore. Well, you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So Kimmy asked her, so was it Sunny and Moses? And Destiny was like, no, she's not gonna let somebody push her out of her friend group. Okay. Um, and Tisha's like, well, they trying to make friends with your friends, specifically that one over there. Listen, the teacher came with the one liner tonight. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> Thank you, Tisha. And Kimmy explains, you know, that she went on a double date with Sunny. Sunny invited her. Um, and we keep hearing this thing about Sunny being a producer who was helpful for the cancer i'm just like okay okay wh where's the rest of the story you know what i'm saying the, and, and the constant and, repetition and kimmy hey you're not in debt to her for life mm -hmm. the cancer's gone thank god you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um thank god that in that moment that someone shows some type of good humanity mm -hmm. and and actually was there for you and and prayed for you and and was nice to you and things like that mm -hmm. but guess what you're you're you don't owe her your loyalty for life right you can say what's right and you can say what's wrong um because the same way as you are there for someone who has cancer morally you got to still be morally when it comes to right and wrong mm -hmm. that's just how i view it and destiny was like okay so sunny showed you her heart mm -hmm. but they are dragging it and I'm like, Destiny, you better hope they drag it. Please, because cause you have they no sold the season to us with this storyline already ready made. And I feel like you are just letting it drift to the side. And I'm mm. like, so what else do you want to talk about? If you don't want to talk about this, what are you bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. I don't know, because you didn't come to the table. You didn't come to Kimmy's event. You didn't. I don't know. So everyone has been clear that they are Team Destiny, that if anything were to go left. Okay. Destiny brings up the Martell and Trish situation about mm -hmm. her going to his house, the DMs and all of that. And Tisha says, well, you know what? We'll have plenty of time to ask her what happened. Mm. And Tisha presents Destiny with a girl's chip gift, saying that Mel told her that she could invite a plus one. So she is going to bring Destiny. Mm. Well, Kimmy says at the end of the trip, we usually accomplish things and have a resolve. So this might be something that is possible for you and Mel. Well, Destiny... Tell Tisha when the last time you've been to one of Mel's events uninvited. Well, Tisha. Yeah, you got escorted you, out. <laughs> <laughs> but Destiny is going to prey on it. And here's the thing about that resolve. It's a fake resolve, mm -hmm. meaning that so many new things pop up at the trip mm -hmm. that they resolve what happened on the trip. Mm -hmm. Not so much of the problem that somebody may have outside the trip. Right. So it, it, it's not like at the end of this trip, Mel is going to be um um part of the cast again and and and, and like and and basically everybody's going to be nice to Mel and vice versa and and people and not, that people are going to be genuine exactly with each other. no yeah it, that that's not going to happen Kimmy so mm -hmm. don't so don't misrepresent that mm -hmm. okay because we seen your flashback clips and, and it was crazy on that 4K TV of you basically calling Martell a nice guy over and over and over and over again and that's when Mel basically clocked you it was like oh you really don't believe that he got a baby on the way because you put him back your head because you believe he's a good guy mm -hmm. oh I'm like oh that do not look good on my TV right there. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it's just interesting but let's keep going so mel and sunny go shopping yeah and mel tells sunny straight up these ladies are not checking for you mm. she wanted to give sunny a heads up because she would have wanted someone to give her a heads up if she was in this situation mm -hmm. um and she tells her like look you might be uncomfortable so i want to give you the space to decide if you really want to come to the trip yeah everyone at the event was pretty much rooting for destiny mm -hmm. and sunny's a bit confused because when she met up with kimmy on the double date things were good she seemed supportive mm -hmm. um and uh, mel tells her well kimmy talked about your support for her when she was going through her diagnosis um but then when other people were uh voicing their disdain or their um, disagreement with your relationship with moses she kind of jumped right in and so then they talked about why would they move to huntsville is it going to try to throw things in destiny's face yeah. and mel says things you know just don't all revolve around destiny and Sunny says, well, you know, they have friendships with her. Mm -hmm. And Mel was like, well, I don't. So it don't really bother me. And and, and, and that's that's still weird to me, this whole Destiny versus Mel thing, because it's like, OK, well, it is what it is like. Y'all need to come together against a common enemy. And that's Martel. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is. I'm not I'm not rehashing that again. Right. And Mel says maybe these women are triggered by you taking a man and they can't put a face to the women that their men have been with. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of taking it out on you. And Sunny was like, well, if anybody should feel a way about that, I mean, you would think it would be you, Mel. Mm -hmm. And Mel says, you know what? They're strongly opinionated by your situation, but not when it came to my situation. Mm -hmm. Kimmy didn't even want to call the girl a side chick mm -hmm. saying how great Martell is and all the flashbacks that we got that to see was as crazy well. work 
Sunny is dreading being attacked and Mel tells her, look, like no one in this girl group can talk about girl code because they did not have her back. And honestly, I'm like, Mel is over this, this group of people. Yeah. She's never going to be open with them, vulnerable, genuine with them. Mm-hmm. She's going to treat them like they're her coworkers. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like, she can be nice enough. But I still don't feel like that makes for an interesting show. Like, if you guys don't really have a relationship, um, it's kind of hard to fake that. And like you said, I think that's why she's bringing her real friends on the trip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she can have some real people to talk to and not have to be, you know, so... Um, have this wall up around her to protect her. Yeah. And I don't fault her for it because I do not feel like they were friends to her. And even in confessionals, Tisha's talking about, well, Martel might be right when Martel literally did the worst of the worst, anything of anyone who could do something in a marriage. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is odd to me how they, are going so hard when it comes to Sunny or even Ken and Trisha's situation. Yeah. But when it came to Mel, everybody was just like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. He's just a great guy. I just really don't know. That's true. And my thing is, I don't mind them kind of looking into their situations with a side eye because there are side eyeable situations mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it's kind of like on that type of keep the same energy type of thing why is it okay um for martel to do what he did to me but now you have like a moral compass for yeah. other people yeah. so and and this is what i'm saying like number one sunny i don't believe you with this whole thing of you don't like being attacked you knew you was gonna be the villain mm-hmm. because you're a you was a producer on the show mm-hmm. so you know how this works um Number two, Mel, if you don't like these people, if you don't like to film with these people, excuse yourself from the show. Mm. Like, like, and, and, and I understand that, that you may have pitched the show. You are one of the producers of the show or, or one of the faces of the show. And, and, and no one's going to run you off your show. Mm-hmm. I understand that. But at the end of the day, it, 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 you're, you're getting blamed for stuff that you wasn't there for. You're getting blamed for stormy mess. You getting blamed for 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 destiny mess. You getting blamed for all this stuff that you you getting blamed for black. You getting you getting blamed for everything. Right. It and, is was it the millimeters? It, it, so, what does it matter? So so my <laughs> whole thing is what 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 good is it gonna do if you is on the show but not on the show? Because mm-hmm. that's that's basically what you're trying to do. You're I, I see your body, but you're physically not there. You are consistently trying to build bonds with new castmates Mm -hmm. (laughs) because you because then eventually new castmates become old castmates that you don't bang with Mm -hmm. new castmates destiny and then eventually a season two go by you don't bang with her new castmates kiki r.i.p kiki then the next thing you know you don't bang with kiki no matter who played in stormy that. stormy is now mm-hmm. the person that you're attaching to and guess what no you, she's not fooling with stormy oh yeah, oh yeah oh yeah i thought you said sunny Mm-mm. sunny um stormy mm-hmm. you, stormy stormy mm-hmm. right you was with stormy at one point now you don't bang with stormy mm-hmm. right now you attaching yourself to sunny mm-hmm. and guess what eventually the same pattern is going to happen sunny's going to say something or do something you don't like and you're not going to bang with her either mm-hmm. so i don't want to just just color it in like the sense of oh them girls don't have go girl code either i don't think any of y'all like each other any of y'all don't got no girl code and things of that nature and it's just a royal rumble on the show mm. and i don't know what needs to happen but my whole thing is you don't want to become that show that loses the whole premise of the show. Mm-hmm. And Blair said it perfectly of this is not real housewives of Alabama. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get what, you know what I'm saying? We want to get back to the premise of the show and things of that nature. But maybe y'all like it. Hey, so far, the people who review the show don't <laughs> <laughs> because they are falling like flies. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the people who are still doing it, who's trucking, who's in the trenches with us and things of that nature. But 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 I do believe in love and marriage Huntsville and and hopefully we will get back to business maybe it needs a whole cash shake up um Ken and Trisha ain't that but you know stick with us for the second half of the season and hopefully we'll do a better job as we hope they do a better job all right anything else that's all I got y'all be good bye-bye